I'm going to uh, go through some uh, rabbits and dados right now. Uh, I have this saw set up with a three quarter inch dado blade. Dado blades are adjustable uh, from a quarter inch up to about seven eighths of an inch. I tend to keep this saw at three quarters of an inch. It's probably our most common dado that we, dado and rabbits that we make. So if you don't know what a dado blade is, uh, look closely at it. There's a number of blades uh, that they inside and or outside and inside blades, and then we have chippers in the middle. And we add chippers or subtract chippers depending on the thickness of the dado that we want. So in this case, we're set up at three quarters, which is what we're going to use. So I've got my miter gauge in place. I'm going to do a dado uh, on this piece of material, and let's say it's at uh, oh I don't know. Let's go nine inches by three-eighths of an inch tall. So, I make my line, again, on the edge of the material. It's just easier to see if you do it on the edge. And then I just have to mark my height in one place. So first off, let's take care of the blade height. So I put my piece of material down. I unlock the lock nut. I get the blade at top dead center right to the blade height that I require. So my blade height, okay, at its very apex is at, a, at three eighths of an inch tall or high. Tighten that lock nut up. Next, I've got my line here on the edge with my X. Line that all up. Bring my stop over. Slide it into place, double check, I'm still okay. Make sure you wear a safety glass on this. On this one you have to cut relatively slow. It's a wide blade, takes a lot of material out. It's pushing the material up as well. So when you're placing your hands in position, right hand's gonna go on the handle of the miter gauge. Left hand is going to keep the piece tight against the fence. Okay, oh, that moved. Just want to double check that. Oh, we're still okay. Okay. My left hand right over top of the miter slot. Okay. Index finger down. In this case, maybe I'll put my pinky down as well. That's holding the piece down. My other two fingers are pulling the piece tight against the miter gauge. Right hand's going to go here. Got all my stuff out of the way here. Turn it on. Okay. Now, like I said, go fairly slow. Give the tool time to cut. you go through, take your hands away, I shut it off with my knee. Just don't reach in there. That'll put uh, quite a ditch through your hand if it ever hits. Okay, then it's safe to pick your piece of material up. And there's a dado. The difference between a dado and a rabbit, which I'll do right away, is a rabbit uh, only has two sides. A dado has three. One, two, three. A rabbit over here, I will make it the same height, by three quarters of an inch, it's only going to have two uh, two edges. So there's three quarter right there. Mark it with a square. I'm going to leave my blade height the same. However, I'm going to change this. So I bring this over, get it lined up. Okay. I use my miter gauge always, and I'm just sliding this back and forth along my miter gauge to get things to the right, to the right line. Takes this, bring it over, tighten it up, pull it back, make sure it's tight against there, double check it, moved on me a little bit, got to go that way about a millimeter. So I just come over here, tap that over a millimeter, triple check. There we go, we're bang on. So, same hand positioning. Okay. Turn it on and slowly push it through. Wait for things to stop. 
going around, see what other people are doing. There we go. And there we have a rabbit. So a rabbit typically is on the end, has one, two surfaces, whereas a dado is a three-sided groove. One, two, three. Okay, and that's rabbits and dados for cross-cutting. Now, we're going to look at doing a, actually right now what we'll do is uh, lengthwise. I'll show you a through dado and a stop dado. So first off, we have to mark off on the end where we want our dado. So I'll find my center, uh, four is two. Okay, that's my center mark. Actually here, I'll use a pen so you can see it a little easier. my center line. I'm going to go 3 eighths of an inch each way. So right there and right there. Again, I wouldn't, use, I wouldn't use a felt pen for doing this. It's not accurate enough. It's just so that you can see it. And then we're going to come across at 3 eighths. That's where we're going to run um, our dado. And in this case, we'll run it the full length. So, put this away. Safety glasses on. Set the blade height. Three eighths right there. Now, this is where it gets a little trickier on your setup. Line it up in place. Okay, then we're going to bring the fence over. I'm going to bring the fence over, get it all lined up as accurate as we can, lock the fence in place. Now, the fence, these are called tail draggers. The fence tends to uh, toe in or out a little bit when you clamp it. So you have to go back and double check. And it towed in. So I have to move the fence out uh, about three mils. So I'm just going to come over here, I'm going to look right over top of this, I'm at 28 mils, I'm going to move that to 31. And we'll see where we're at, and that looks good. Okay, so we've got our blade height set, and our fence set. Now we're going to use, we're going to use magnetic feather boards, or finger boards, depends what manufacturers making them. Uh, these ones uh, are really cool. They're magnetic. They have magnets that turn on and off. Now, what we want to do when we're putting these in place is they're going to keep the material tight against the fence. This lead finger here, you don't want pushing on the blade. So back it up just a little bit from the blade, like a centimeter. Okay. Put some pressure on it, then turn the magnets on. Okay. And then see that's pushing against the fence. Okay, the back one, we want the back finger to be just behind the back of the blade so that we're not putting pressure on the blade. We're just putting pressure here against the fence. Now, we're going to use a push stick with this, okay, because the blade, the blade will disappear. You won't see it cutting. You'll hear it, Okay, but you won't see it, so you don't want your hand in a position um, where you can't see the blade. So, we'll turn that on. Again, uh, today we're using oak, it's a very dense material, a uh, wide blade, deep cut, we're going to want to go slow. So your left hand is going to stay here, initially, for about half of the cut. Okay? You don't have to worry about pushing the piece over against the fence. You just have to be holding it down. The push stick's going to be sitting right here, so it's easy to get to. We're going to start without the push stick. Left hand on the feather board. Start pushing it in. Now, with my right hand here at the back, I can't let anything go. My right hand at the back. Once it gets to roughly where the fence is, or where the table saw begins, 
squeeze hard in the left hand, grab your push stick, hook it on, then take your left hand and put it on the back feather board. Okay, and hold your piece of material down. to keep pressure down to your thumb or else if this rides up from the blade you get a big kind of mound or lump in there which we don't want okay so just a quick review okay feather boards set up so that they're not putting pressure on the blade they're putting pressure on the wood which will then put pressure onto the fence left hand sits here that's on the front magnetic uh, feather board you're going to be pushing your piece of material through when your right hand gets right here, up near the fence, okay, squeeze super hard to the left hand, grab your push stick, put it in place, move your left hand to the back feather board, push this all the way through. Once it goes through, don't reach in here, don't reach in here, okay, reach maybe over here, pull it out, shut it off, wait for everything to stop. Now, I'll show you how to do a stop dado. So this is a through dado, it goes all the way through the piece of material, the full length of it. In a lot of applications, we need to stop it, I don't know, a couple inches from the end. So again, use your ruler, it's much more accurate. Mark, let's say, let's say two and a half inches. Draw a square line across there. Here, I'll do it in felt pen again so you can see it. Felt pan across. Now that line is where you want the dado to stop. Where you determine that, that the dado is going to stop is where the blade stops cutting. So it's hard to see here, but it's right where the blade goes below the surface of the table. So right at the throat plate here, get it set up so that Right where that one tooth goes through and it's below the surface of the, the table, we make a mark on our fence. So it changes depending on the height of the blade. So we're right here. That's where we want to stop. So let's put this back in place. Mark that on the wrong side, I won't be able to see it, because that's where I'm going to be cutting. I'm going to transfer that to this edge where I'll be able to see it, because it'll be the up-facing edge. There we go. So, making a rabbit, a small rabbit. Uh, in this case, we'll, uh, well, I haven't determined how big we'll make it yet. So we're gonna use this, this is an auxiliary fence. And you notice it's been cut by the dado blade and we want that. So we clamp it on. So, So make sure your clamps stay up so the wood doesn't run into it. Let's keep it there for that one. Now, typically where we have to use this is where, where we're making a rabbit for backs to go into panels for cabinets. So what we're going to do, typically they go in a quarter of an inch. So we use this piece here, I guess. We'll measure, measure in a quarter of an inch on, on the edge. Okay, so a quarter of an inch. There. I'm going to set my blade height a quarter of an inch. Right there. There's my blade height set. And then I want a quarter of an inch over. So again, I'll set or I'll mark it out on edge so I can line things up properly. 
Okay, so I'm gonna line it up at a quarter of an inch, like so, and bring my fence over. Get rid of all that sawdust, okay? Clamp in place. You can see the fence moved over, kind of all on its own. So I have to go back that way a couple mils. Take a look here. There we go, okay? Now in this situation, okay, I'm going to use just my hand uh, or a wide push stick uh, to push my piece through. I'm not gonna use the board, the magnetic feather boards. If it was much narrower than this, I would, but this one gives me a good handhold. Um, but I will grab a wide push stick from the jointer. Okay, so here's a wide push stick. Now, uh, if you're uncomfortable using your hand, use the wide push stick. So back everything off, turn it on. Just like ripping, your left hand's gonna be pushing your piece of material towards the fence. Push stick roughly in the center of your piece of material, and right it through. Keeping it tight against the fence. with our rabbit um, for typically it's for a back for a cabinet to go into okay and backs typically are a quarter of an inch uh, or maybe even a little thicker maybe uh, maybe half an inch in our case for most of what we do we use quarter inch backs okay so that's why we need the auxiliary fence because we don't want to cut into our actual fence okay, and damage it if we damage this we just throw it out and make a new one um, if you're doing a narrow piece you can go ahead and use the feather boards. Okay. Again, you set it up in a similar fashion. You won't change the dimensions. Okay. Feather boards in place. Front finger. Okay. It's just going to be in front of the front uh, edge of the blade. Back finger on this one, just behind the back edge of the blade. Take this. Get a push stick handy. Get it standing up there somewhere. Left hand, just your thumb is pushing down. This one's short enough, I will use a, just a push stick right from the start. And feeding it along. Once there's enough material, I'll put the foot at the back feather board, go to the back, back feather board. There's a rabbit done on this piece. Uh, what else do we need to show you? That's pretty much it uh, for rabbits and dados on the table saw. Okay, so now we're going to continue with the stop dado. So here's my mark on my piece of material. Here's my mark uh, on the fence of where the blade goes below the surface. And that's where I want uh, my dado to stop. Okay, right there. So I've got my push stick handy, let's turn it on. Okay, hand positioning is really important here. Left hand just stays here, okay? Until we grab the push stick. After we have the push stick in place, then we'll move our left hand up here. So. Again, go slow, okay, it's dense wood, it's a wide blade, it's a deep cut. Thumb pushing down, okay. I'll stand out of the way so you can see a little bit. Now my right hand, my back hand, uh, that's holding the end of the material is now near the table saw and the fence and my hand's not going to be able to go any further. So I squeeze hard with my left hand, grab the push stick, put it in place. Don't do anything until the push stick's in place. After the push stick is securely in place, move your left hand to the front of your piece of material and continue your cut.
get within a few centimeters of your lines matching up, slow down so you don't go past your line. Okay, where lines are meeting up. Turn the saw off with your knee. Don't move your hands. Don't let go of the piece of wood. Okay, that's really important that your hands stay in place. Push stick included. Okay, that's the most important part. Okay, keep everything in place until the blade is completely stopped moving. Lift it up. And you can see where our dado, our stop dado has stopped. So again, quick review. Set up your feather board so the front of the front feather board is just before the front of the blade and the back feather board, the back finger is just behind the back of the blade. Left hand in place right here, okay, push stick easily accessible, your thumb on your left hand is pushing down, okay, and that's really important because the blade wants to lift everything up, okay. Start feeding it into the saw, continue along until your right hand gets up near the fence where it's gonna kind of run into the fence. Then squeeze very hard with the left hand, grab the push stick, put the push stick in place, make sure it's secure. Then move your left hand forward, okay? Keep sliding, making your cut, going fairly slow. When you get within a few centimeters of your lines matching up, go really slow, maybe even tilt the, the push stick over a little bit so you can see your lines match up. When they match, shut the saw off with your left knee and wait for everything to stop before you move your push sticks or push stick in hand, okay? That is crucial, okay? You can't go like that or this thing's gonna go shooting back that way, okay? And that'd be pretty wicked back and there you have your stop deal